Have you ever stopped to ponder the origins of the term Caucasoid and what it actually signifies in the realm of physical anthropology? Well, to unravel this intriguing term, let's embark on a journey back to the 19th century, to the birth of physical anthropology. The term Caucasoid has its roots in racial classification, a concept that was much favored in the scientific circles of the time. Picture this. It's the dawn of the 19th century, and a German anthropologist named Johann Friedrich Blumenbach is deeply engrossed in the study of human skulls. Fascinated by the diversity of human morphology, Blumenbach proposed a classification scheme based on geography and physical characteristics. He identified five main groups, the Caucasian, the Mongolian, the Malayan, the Ethiopian, and the American. The term Caucasoid, or Caucasian race, as it was initially termed, was coined by Blumenbach himself. But why Caucasian? Well, Blumenbach was particularly captivated by a skull he had obtained from the Caucasus Mountains region, located between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. He considered this skull to be the epitome of human beauty, and thus chose to name the group after the region. However, it's essential to remember that Blumenbach's Caucasian race wasn't solely about aesthetics. It was a group characterized by certain physical features, such as lighter skin, varied hair texture, and a specific skull structure. It was designed to include people from Europe, West Asia, South Asia, and North Africa, a diverse array of regions indeed. But here's the catch, Blumenbach's classification was not devoid of controversy. Critics have argued that it was a product of its time, deeply influenced by the prevailing Eurocentric worldview. And while Blumenbach himself vehemently opposed the notion of racial superiority, his classification system was unfortunately misused by others to justify such notions. So, the term Caucasoid has deep roots in anthropological history, but how did it evolve over time? Well, stay tuned, as we delve deeper into the evolution and transformation of the Caucasoid classification. In the late 18th century, Johann F. Blumenbach, a German anthropologist, introduced the term Caucasoid. He devised a five-fold racial division categorizing humanity into five distinct races. These were the Caucasoid, Mongoloid, Malayan, Ethiopian, and American. The Caucasoid race, according to Blumenbach, encompassed Europe, Western Asia, and North Africa. But why did Blumenbach choose the term Caucasoid? His choice was inspired by the beauty of a skull he had received from the Caucasus region, which he believed was the most aesthetically pleasing among his collection. He postulated that the Caucasus region was the birthplace of mankind, and hence, he named the race that he considered the most beautiful and intelligent after this region, Blumenbach's Caucasoid classification played a significant role in shaping the discussions about race in anthropology. His five-fold racial division was widely adopted and became a cornerstone in the study of human diversity. His association of Caucasoid with beauty and intelligence also significantly influenced societal perceptions of race, inadvertently promoting the idea of racial hierarchy. However, it's important to note that Blumenbach's intentions were not to create a hierarchy of races. He argued against the popular belief of his time that different races represented different species. Instead, he proposed that all humans belong to the same species, with variations being due to environmental factors. In fact, he was one of the first scholars to argue that humanity is one, emphasizing the unity and equality of all humans. Yet despite his intentions, Blumenbach's Caucasoid classification paved the way for numerous misconceptions and stereotypes. His association of Caucasoid with beauty and intelligence was misinterpreted and misused, leading to the perpetuation of racial biases and prejudices. It's a stark reminder that while scientific classifications can help us understand our world, they can also be misused when taken out of their original context. Despite Blumenbach's intentions, his Caucasoid classification paved the way for numerous misconceptions and stereotypes. As time passed, the Caucasoid classification underwent several transformations. In the 19th century the term Caucasoid, initially coined to categorize physical characteristics, began to take on new interpretations. As the field of anthropology matured, the term was used not only to describe physical attributes but also to suggest inherent qualities of intellect and morality. It's important to remember that these interpretations were grounded in the societal norms and biases of the time. In the 20th century, the Caucasoid classification became even more potent, influencing racial ideologies and policies. For instance, in the United States, the term Caucasian found its way into immigration law and court rulings. It influenced decisions on who could become a naturalized citizen, with immigrants from Europe, the Middle East and North Africa, often being classified as Caucasians. 
and therefore eligible for citizenship. Meanwhile in Europe, the classification fueled the flames of racial superiority. Nazi Germany manipulated the term to propagate their ideology of Aryan supremacy. They used it to justify their heinous acts during the Holocaust. The classification was twisted and manipulated, erroneously turning a scientific term into a tool for promoting racial superiority. However, it's crucial to note that these interpretations were not universally accepted. Many scientists and anthropologists challenged the misuse of the Caucasoid classification. They argued that the diversity within each racial group far outweighed the differences between them. They pointed out the lack of scientific basis for asserting racial superiority based on physical characteristics. Despite these critiques, the impact of the Caucasoid classification on societal structures was profound. It shaped immigration policies, influenced court rulings, and even affected personal identities. The term was no longer just a classification, it had become a marker of social status, a determinant of rights and opportunities, and a source of prejudice and discrimination. And so, a term that began as a simple classification became an instrument of division and discrimination. Fast forward to the present day, how do we perceive the Caucasoid classification? Well, in the realm of modern science, there's been a significant shift in the way we frame the concept of race. The Caucasoid classification, once a cornerstone of physical anthropology, has largely been superseded by a more comprehensive understanding of human genetic diversity. Today many scientists assert that the traditional racial classifications are not only oversimplified, but also scientifically inaccurate. They argue that such classifications fail to capture the true complexity of human genetic diversity, which is far more intricate and intertwined than previously thought. So where does this leave the Caucasoid classification? In a nutshell, it's largely seen as an outdated concept. The primary reason for this is that genetic research has revealed that there's more genetic variation within so-called races than between them, challenging the validity of these racial categories. And it doesn't stop there. The shift from racial classifications to understanding human genetic diversity has also been fueled by the recognition that many traits commonly used to define races, such as skin color or hair texture, are controlled by multiple genes and are therefore not mutually exclusive. This leads us to another crucial point, the consensus that race is a social construct, not a biological one. This view acknowledges that while physical differences do exist among humans, the categorization of these differences into distinct races is more a reflection of social and cultural factors than of genetic realities. To put it simply, the way we perceive race is heavily influenced by societal attitudes and prejudices, rather than by any clear-cut biological distinctions. This understanding challenges the very basis of the Caucasoid classification and similar racial categorizations. In conclusion, rather than relying on outdated racial classifications, modern science seeks to understand the full spectrum of human genetic diversity. By doing so, it encourages us to look beyond superficial physical differences and to appreciate the complex tapestry of human variation. In today's world, the Caucasoid classification is largely seen as an outdated concept, replaced by a more nuanced understanding of human diversity. So, what have we learned about the Caucasoid classification? In our journey through the labyrinth of anthropology, we've delved into the birth, evolution, and current perspective of the Caucasoid classification. We started by probing the concept, tracing its roots back to the late 18th century. It was born out of a desire to categorize the diverse human population into distinct races, a controversial endeavor in itself. Johann Friedrich Blumenbach, a German physician and anthropologist, is recognized as the father of this classification. He proposed the term Caucasian in 1795, basing it primarily on skull measurements and skin color. Blumenbach believed that the Caucasus region was the cradle of mankind, hence the term's origin. His classification however has been criticized for its Eurocentric biases and lack of genetic basis. As we move forward in time, we saw the evolution of the Caucasoid classification. It became more nuanced, expanding beyond mere skull measurements and skin color to include other physical traits. Yet, it remained a tool of stereotyping and discrimination, often used to justify social hierarchies and racial prejudices. In today's perspective, we understand that the Caucasoid classification is a relic of a bygone era. Modern science, specifically genetics, has dismantled the idea of distinct human races, showing that our genetic diversity is not neatly compartmentalized into racial categories. 
The human species is much more complex and interconnected than Blumenbach and his contemporaries could have possibly imagined. Moreover, we now recognize the harm caused by such classifications. They oversimplify human diversity and can lead to harmful stereotypes and discrimination. Instead of focusing on our differences, we should celebrate our shared humanity and the rich tapestry of cultures that make up our world. While the term Caucasoid may be a relic of the past, its story serves as a reminder of the complexity of human diversity and the dangers of misunderstanding it. If you enjoyed this video please like, share and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.